we are discussing about uh, constitution indian constitution and uh, we are going to discuss some historical part of that so you are aware that in earlier lectures we started this lecture uh, that is from uh, british rule and then onwards we discuss till 1857 that is revolt uh, they say that's mutiny of sepoy or indian national freedom struggle and then we discuss that government of india act of 19 uh, of 1858 now henceforth britishers uh, that means indians actually were directly under control of british parliament so what was difference till 1858 there was government that was ruled by british east india company and uh answerable to parliament british parliament but now british parliament took direct control over india and then they started making certain reforms directly with india now keep in mind that why such things were required let us uh, we are discussing something in respect to philosophy in respect to history we are going to discuss this all uh, number 1 if you are studying out the teachings given by aristotle to alexander answer lies there what alexander was taught that world is divided into two parts one is greek and other is non greeks so greek part is very well developed part non greek is totally undeveloped part and what is your duty your means what alexander's duty to conquer non greeks and convert them to greeks uh, or greek like people now same thing is followed by britishers they conquered only we have to replace word greek by british so they conquered non british maximum part of world was conquered by britishers only and then they started converting them like britishers for that purpose i am communicating with you in english i am wearing shirts like that uh, british only dresses are like british only so this is actually a massive concept that conversion or imposing one's culture over other's culture whether it was necessary or not necessary that is different question but britishers started this now not only clothing style not only language but all respect we have to get a uh, same to same like britishers this was their maximum efforts at that time that's why they introduced english education they created a value for english education then they started imposing a rule that is called as parliamentary democracy in india now we have to revise once again that uh, if you studied various empires in the world right from persian empire then greek empire that is under uh, rule of alexander after uh, alexander also greek empire was very vast chengiz khan's empire that is single man largest empire in the world and what not you will find that with very very fewer examples not a single dynasty or a single rule was able to survive over thousands of years usually three phases are there in the life of an empire first one that is the creation at that time everybody is in enthusiasm they are uh, having very good working very good understanding and all that and therefore they are able to build a vast empire initially the second phase we are calling that is as stagnancy phase that is uh, we are the emperor we are ruling over you like that status is there and the third state that is there that is the declining if you check this thoroughly uh, this uh, is there uh, if you are going through history then various empires passed out through these states only very few examples are there where after declining they regain the status for a while once again and then again they lost for example satwahan so again sithian satwahan lost out but later on they regained the structure and uh, emerged out as vast empire as in india but later on they degraded so this way we can discuss 
Now Britishers were aware of all these things, particularly after Renaissance or uh, beginning of Renaissance only, they started developing their empire and now they were having dream to run Indian empire or say British empire in India for longer period. They were also aware that this is not a perpetual empire, but as long as we can stretch, we have to stretch the extent of empire. Now, they were having threat that from one side, that means from Afghanistan side, Russia, at that time it was Russia, then it became USSR, but that is very latter phase. Russia was advancing towards India and Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, like that countries were already annexed by Russia. And so they made Afghanistan as a buffer state between Russia or Russian Empire and British Empire in India. Same way, another threat was there that was from China at that time. And so they made Tibet as a buffer state between China and British India. No doubt, China was not at that time that great. Soon, Britishers realized the strength of China and then they made their influence centers in China, that is apart. But now their empire was made safe from external attacks. Internally, it was called as a garrison state. That means the state which is depending upon army. Largely, they were controlling Indians because of their vast army. But if this type of states uh, are there, then there are chances that certain uh, movement can crush this empire. Say for example, revolt happened that was in 1857. That is actually first freedom struggle of India. But many people refer this as mutiny of Sipot. So like that internal threat is also there. And then large number of people should support Britishers at that time. That was their plan. And for that purpose, they decided Indians to be there in their government also. Initially, uh, that means uh, from 1757 onwards, Britishers were focusing, see the phases in their ruling system. They were focusing to get maximum control in Britishers hand, particularly company's hand. But then onwards, they used the policy. These policies are called as decentralization. So if you are aware that charter acts were there accordingly, uh, they considered that governor of Bengal should be considered as governor general at that time and governor of Mumbai that is Bombay at that time and Madras at that time they were under direct control of governor of Bengal so like that concepts were there now later on in 1857 uh, 1858 rather that governor general was renamed as viceroy now what was the situation as we discussed that there was a secretary of state we will see if I am uh, showing here then this is the crown crown means British emperor uh, so called nominal king no much power was there in his hands or her hands but uh, maximum we are considering that everything was carried out by parliament in the name of her majesty or his majesty that was a uh, crown then this was parliament, British parliament. Out of that British parliament, a department was there, we can say. Here, a person was there that is called as secretary of state. Secretary of state was having his representative in India. Now he termed as viceroy. So this is actually Indian king or Indian emperor. Okay, Indian emperor that was called as viceroy that was under control of secretary, uh, secretary of state. Then there were councils. Now uh, initially they were having two councils that is legislative council and executive council. Then for provinces also they decided to give councils. And later on uh, there was another thought. I don't know that uh, whether they were aware, but 
the idea was that if at all we we means at that time britishers so we uh, required to leave india then we had to make as many fragments of india as possible and for that purpose basically decentralization concept was introduced now uh, this was period of renaissance in europe various newer ideas were coming out so in field of drawings in field of art in field of music everywhere new ideas were emerging out and at that time also they were introducing new ideas in political part now in that sense if we want to get new ideas then they started practicing out these ideas in their colonies so in india they given these new ideas in form of new reforms so we have to say that is under concept of reforms and then they tested out whether this is useful or not okay now please keep in mind as our earlier lectures were there i have discussed but right now also again i am discussing uh, that britishers role was not at all to develop indians okay britishers came here from such a long uh, longer distance to gain wealth of india britishers were intelligent they were not uh, some stupid person like mohammed of ghazni and all that they sat down they got tremendous wealth but only once britishers wanted to sack out this indian wealth perpetually and for that purpose they wanted to rule over indians it was not at all their ambition to teach indians to uh, spread knowledge in india and uh, get enhance indians no if that was the requirement then there was no need that britishers should rule, rule over india already we were doing all our best so uh, if your mind is having this type of concept that it is very good thing that britishers arrived in india then it is wrong they arrived in india only and only for sacking out india but how to sack india for longer time that means uh, you have to make uh, hard work you have to gather wealth and portion of what you have accumulated wealth that should reach to england automatically so like that they were in, uh, interested in making system and therefore they allowed us in participation uh, in government only and only because they wanted to make long lasting rule in india and indians should support that okay so uh, uh, three important act now we have to discuss that is indian council act of 1861 then indian council act of 1892 and indian council act of 1909 okay first we are going to focus on these three acts uh, i am again revising the intention was to sack out india not to teach us not to give us knowledge nothing we have to use various policies so that we can rule in india perpetually that was the intention in that intention they started giving this thing and uh, something like a lollipop they were showing us that lollipop was of freedom and your self rule self governance like that words are there let us check out uh, number one feature of this act that is uh, i am discussing now indian council act of 1861 so it will be beginning of representative institutions by associating indians with the law making process okay that means britishers are now taking us they are uplifting us okay uh, it thus provided that viceroy should nominate some indians as non official members in his expanded council see the view indians were allowed in their council but as non official member that is also nominated by viceroy so it was not that public representation was there viceroy was given this power uh, now in 1862 lord canning uh, 
His name is very nice. So he was scanning, cunning, whatever the thing. Because uh, intentionally, he destroyed various parts in Indian art and architecture on paper. Uh, what will be that? We will see afterwards. But that Lord Canning, at that time he was Viceroy, he nominated three Indians to legislative council. That is the Raja of Banaras, Maharaja of Patiala and Sir Dimkar Ra. So like that, he introduced three, three people in Viceroy's council that is nominated people but only as a non-official member. So this was the thing. It initiated the process of decentralization by restoring the legislative powers to the Bombay and Madras provinces. So here this is the word that in initial stages during Regulating Act and Charter Act, they were consolidating power in hands of Governor General of Bengal. Now they wanted to decentralize this power. So little liberal nature they accepted here. Uh, it does revise, uh, reverse the centralizing tendency that started from Regulating Act of 1773. Now, uh, this decentralization policy, uh, in the book it is mentioned that ended in 1937, that is uh, 1935's Government Act of India, but no, practically this ended in 1947, not in 37, by decentralizing India into more than 500 fragments. That was the main aim. So we have to keep in mind always that this, are, uh, this is the reason why they initiated this type of decentralization process. Now it also provided the uh, for establishment of new legislative council for Bengal Northwestern provinces and Punjab. Now, this is something we can say the sowing of seeds for further partition of India. And uh, they were established in 1862, 1886, and 1897. Now, this is actually the sowing of seeds which got fruits in 1947 in form of separation of Pakistan. Uh, it empowered the Viceroy to make rules and orders for more convenient transaction of business in the council. It also gave a recognition to the portfolio system introduced by Lord Canning in 1859. Now this way uh, certain things were added in this uh, 1861 Act, that is Indian Council Act. Uh, it empowered the Viceroy to issue ordinance, that is, uh, without consulting with the Legislative Council, he can pass certain law, but which was effective only for six months. You are aware as in case of ordinance, but we are going to discuss in latter phase what is exactly ordinance but here we can say that ordinance is simple law that was passed by only single authority and which should get either passed in house within six months or its power automatically declines. Now Indian Council Act of 1892. So just uh, we can say after 30 years of peaceful rule according to British they passed 1892 Council Act. Uh, why I am saying peaceful? Because much of the events from Indian freedom struggle were not observed in this part. Only few but very very effective event that was occurred. That was from Pune. That was a revelation by Vasudeva Balwanta Phadke. This was giving terrible threat for British ideology. Say, if person is killing out any person, it is different. But what ideology is there? Say, at that time when William Benty and all these people were uh, giving certain system, idea, what was their idea behind this? They were saying this way, that we have to create, hmm, we have to create English speaking people in India, English learned, English educated uh, people 
they should get government job and they should read english newspapers so they should have english habits and on the basis of that our empire will survive in india the such people they considered as loyal people to the british empire surprisingly vasudev valvant phadke was learned person english educated he joined government job also and then also he rebelled against britishers and that was a challenge to this type of system and then british planned out another way that there must be dialogue between government and uh, local indian people and for that purpose in 1885 they established indian national congress obviously under leadership of uh, sir hume retired ics officer at that time but then onwards they made certain uh, thing uh, that is in 19, uh, 1892 act it increased the number of additional additional means non official member now they divided this member official and non official british means official indians mean non official then central and provincial legislative council but maintain the official majority in them so non official members were should not have any majority in that number only that day that means idea was that all right you are allowed to come here but whatever we are going to do that is only final now it increase the functions of legislative council and gave them the power of discussing the budget and addressing questions to the executive that means initially these powers were not there for council member so they were just to see the drama what happened in council it provided for the nomination of some non official members uh, to the central legislative council by viceroy on recommendation of the provincial legislative council and the bengal chamber of commerce and that of the provincial legislative council by governors on the recommendation of district board municipalities universities trade association zamindars and chambers so like that this was basic idea of 1892 act now uh, indian council act of 1909 again check in mind that in 1905 there was a threat of world war it was already started in 1905 britishers and french came on the table said came on the table means what for discussion otherwise there was terrible animosity between britishers and french but now they decided to uh, discuss their uh, problems and solve them and unite this union was against prussia that is germany and that's why 1909 that act that is remarkable uh, on the effect or say uh, on the position in europe that was supposed to give some great war position of europe was not good at that time political situation of europe was not that good at that time and therefore uh, chances of world war they were predicted from 1905 onwards now another important thing here that in india congress was split up congress took some different mode 1885 to uh, 1905 congress was dominated by people they were having complete belief in the lawful nature of britishers they were called as moderate people they were applying applications were there okay uh, like that uh, civil services examination we call that as ics examination at that time so ics examination should be there in india and like that demands were there from these people okay but now a group dominated by lokpal netil become active that is called as extremist group and then british introduce a concept that is divide and rule so 1905 that was remarkable year in indian uh, 
politics also there was establishment of muslim league a party which was encouraged by sir sayyad ahmed khan from aligarh university he was founder of aligarh university at that time but uh, his thoughts and uh, further concepts they were led to formation of muslim league to counter muslim league a party was established that is hindu mahasabha initially it was hindu sabha later on all over india the party established that is called as hindu mahasabha uh, you are aware of the person named as pandit madan mohan malviya uh, founder of bhu that is banaras hindu university so like that counters were started the communal things started coming in the indian politics and by taking advantage of these all that means this is all intentionally created we can say it is political engineering at that time and now look in the 1909 what act was passed hmm? uh, it considerably increased the size of legislative councils both central and provincial that means we have now provincial separate guru council and central council is there the number of members in central legislative council was raised from 16 to 60 16 to 60 Okay, who is that great person who allotted this act? The name is uh, Lord Morley. Uh, at that time, the Secretary of State, that S S, and uh, Viceroy Minto, Lord Minto. He was Viceroy of India. So these are called as uh, Morley Minto reforms. Where uh, number of members in Central Council, uh, Council was raised from 16 to 60. the number of members in provincial legislative councils they were also raised but they were not uniform means we can compare it with uh, lok sabha and uh, legislative council that is vidhan sabha so in india today also vidhan sabha members they are not same all states are not having same number of members so like that it was there it retained official majority in the central legislative council okay official majority means what the european majority whereas non official means indian they were in minority so no uh, not at all we are in position to pass out any law in central government because official majority that means european majority was maintained but allowed the provincial legislative councils to have non official majority that means they deliberately started uh we can say decentralization process here now uh it enlarged the deliberative functions of legislative council at both levels for example members were allowed to ask supplementary questions move resolution on budget and so on that means the power which was not earlier days in your hand they started giving that power this is actually the result we can say the result is of what work that was achieved by extremist people and then uh, 1905 onwards armed revolutionary work was also started uh, to great extent as a result government wanted to give something to you this was a setup of dialogue and actually this is uh, we can say expressed in the letter given by freedom fighter savarkar but we will discuss on some other topic uh, we are uh, again uh, switching over to the part uh, it provided for the first time for association of indians with the executive council of viceroy and governors satyendra prasad sinha became the first indian to join viceroy's executive council he was appointed as law member it introduced a system of communal representation for muslim by accepting the concept of separate electorate now Uh, this is the most important thing henceforth uh, britishers plan towards division of india we can say uh, now sprouted out 
initially i was saying it was only sowing of seeds but now it is said that it is sprouted out they started what they saw that now sprouted out here because muslim league after establishment the members went to viceroy and demanded that uh, we should have a definite representation in the council and for that purpose uh, they introduced this concept that is separate electorate under this the muslim members were to be elected only by muslim voters so this is considered as legalized communalism that means if government is saying we have to say it is legalized and uh, the father of communicar uh, communal uh, communal electorate that should be that morley and mint they introduced this type of thing now you will come to know why i am saying that british rule was not here for betterment of indians it was for destruction of indians it was to sack out indians it was to treat indians like a slave but we were not able to understand that we were the slaves like that situation was created uh, sorry it's created because right now also i am communicating with you in english it also provided for the separate representations of presidency uh, corporations chambers of commerce universities and zamindars so it should go to ground that was the situation we discuss about uh, indian council act of 1892 now only three more laws to go they are 1919 uh, that is morley minto reforms then on uh, sorry uh, montague james ward reform then uh, we have to discuss 1935 government of india act and lastly uh, what mount batten plan according to that we got freedom so maybe possible in next lecture we are going to finish this on uh, thanks